out of all the ways that we thought the fight could end, this was the most unpredictable. Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 3. Now, what really happened in this fight? Conor was taking over like the first minute to two minutes of the fight. Dustin Poirier started to steal that momentum, started going after Conor. Conor pulled guard, put himself in a bad position. Very ill-advised guillotine choke. I'll explain why he went for that. Dustin took advantage of it, and then Conor snapped his ankle. Now, I know Dustin said that he checked a leg kick and he felt it, but actually when you look back at the whole fight, Dustin never checked any kicks. The one that he pointed down to, Dustin definitely did not check the kick. The foot actually landed like behind his knee almost. I also see people saying that Connor kicked his elbow. That didn't happen as well. It went past the elbow. And actually, when you look at it, I observed it very closely. It looks like Connor actually hurt his ankle before it snapped on him. Look at before he throws a left hand. When he's looking for the opening, look at the angle of his ankle here. This is very abnormal. I think he hurt his ankle right here before he stepped back on it. Because when he stepped back, it instantly gave out. It was like there was no stability at all. It looks like Conor McGregor hurt his ankle before he threw the left hand and then he snapped it after it. Just a clear freak accident and definitely not the way people wanted this fight to end. It was fun. There was a lot more to go. Dustin Poirier had the momentum on his side. Conor seemed to get a little tired, but he wasn't exhausted by that point. There was a lot more for this fight to happen. But it could be a little bit of karma because Herb Dean messed up yet again in this fight. The only reason why Conor was able to stand up from his back was because he cheated. He simply cheated, just like the Habib fight where he committed like 20 fouls and Herb Dean looked the other way the entire time, he yet again allowed Connor to grab Dustin's glove. He has like all of his fingers inside of Dustin's glove, clearly in Herb Dean's view. Dustin moves away, talks to Herb, and Herb Dean just allows Connor to stand up and doesn't reposition them back. He just allows them to keep going. That's the only reason why Connor stood up. But let's talk about what happened before this. Right in the beginning of the fight, man, Connor came out with all of it. The karate stance, the kicks, the movement, and it was very successful. He actually moved away from one of the leg kicks. Ironically, it was his boxing that fell back a bit. Connor was landing a lot of kicks that I was talking about in my prediction video. He had to throw the kicks and they were very effective. He landed some to the body, the spinning kicks as Dustin tried to move away on his left angle. Connor was intercepting that with the spinning back kick. This is actually the exact same way their first fight was going. Connor opened up with a hook kick. Instead of this, Connor opened up with a spinning back kick and then in both fights, he intercepted Dustin with that spinning back kick as Dustin was moving to his left. There were leg kicks that were landing as a lot of people know that Conor McGregor doesn't check kicks. People forgot that Dustin Poirier also doesn't check kicks. It's another thing I was talking about here. Conor was also bringing back that left straight right uppercut combination that he landed in the second fight, but in this one, he was kind of reaching out for it and it seemed like he was forcing the action instead of allowing it to happen like he usually does. And this got him almost countered by that right hook. And even there was a moment where he threw the left high kick, but Dustin was moving away from it. There was even a moment at 3 minutes at 36 seconds where Connor threw out the left straight without really moving his head. When Dustin actually advanced on him, Connor did not use any kind of head movement to slip the punch and then counter. Something he does to everybody. Eddie Alvarez, Chad Mendez, Nate Diaz. Everybody Connor fights, he usually waits for him to throw the punch, advance on him, and then he counters them. This is one of the first times I've ever seen Connor just wing out a left straight as Dustin moved in on him. And Dustin Dustin was the one who moved his head on the outside of the left straight and connected on Connor with his left overhand. You have to notice here that Dustin didn't have full impact of his punch because he actually bent at the elbow, which really caused his punch to break. This would have been way more devastating with the perfect form. Just like everything else, Connor rushed that left hand. He wanted to be as active as possible in the fight. And this activity actually became part of his downfall because just like he was forcing out the left straight and the left high kick, he forced out a guillotine attempt on Dustin Poirier that got Dustin Poirier to dominate him because Dustin was not getting him to the ground that easily. We all know that Conor McGregor has decent takedown defense and Dustin didn't have the position to really secure the takedown. And it wasn't just the guillotine. Connor's the one that actually shot in on the takedown first. Connor was talking a lot before this fight about, you know, the first guy to shoot a takedown is all this and all that. But ironically, he was the one that shot the first takedown. Dustin Poirier made Connor shoot because he started to land a little bit of shots on Connor and greatly pressure him. Dustin was bolting down with that left hand no matter what Connor was doing, whether it be throwing his own left whether it be throwing a left kick and Dustin was becoming the better counter puncher and once Dustin bolted on with a left hook Connor went under and clinched up with Dustin you can see this takedown actually caught Dustin off guard because look at his balance here he completely lost his balance because of the surprise if Connor really drove into this he possibly could have got Dustin to the ground but all Connor was looking for was to break the action and slow down the fight which is actually pretty ironic for Connor McGregor that Dustin was actually able to pressure him so heavily and put the action on him so heavy 
that Connor needed a breather in the first round where Connor's the strongest. And while Connor was on his back, it gave you the exact same memories of the Habib fight. Not really the best at guarding up, not really the best at posturing and posting, just really trying to move his head from the ground upon, but it didn't really work just like it didn't work that much with the Habib fight. He was getting hit. Connor shows to have a very good chin there, but Dustin Poirier was just putting it on him. His stacking, his posturing on top of Connor just allowed him to rain down those elbows. The thing about Dustin Poirier was he didn't need to really stand up over Connor. This is something that Habib was doing as well, but with Dustin Poirier, he's not on that same level that Habib is on, so Connor was able to find the up kicks very well. And it made Dustin realize that he had to get body to body with Connor. He could not create that much separation between the two. Now, there's a little bit of a debate of how Connor was able to stand up the way he did. Connor actually did grab Dustin's gloves. You can see it right here. With both hands, he puts his fingers inside the glove to hold Dustin in position so he can up kick him. This could have turned very, very badly and caused Connor to be disqualified if he knocked out Dustin like this. So Dustin pulled away and started talking to the ref, and this gave Connor enough time to stand up. Another bad call from Herb Dean, man. So Herb Dean, just like the Habib fight, they allow Connor to continuously cheat throughout it. He allowed Connor to yet again cheat in order to stand up, and he didn't even get him back on the ground. He didn't even reposition them back where they were. And this is where the whole thing with the ankle happens here. So ultimately, pretty good performance by Connor, especially early. He made mistakes that got himself in a bad position. Dustin Poirier took advantage of it. He had a shaky start, but then he started to get go with the left hands, and then when he got on top, land a bunch of shots. I think that Dustin was eventually going to win this fight, but you never know. I mean, that was only the first round. Connor is still strong in the second. He could still land some shots on Dustin, but Dustin has shown to be a lot more durable, and because of his durability because of his cardio and because he had the momentum on his side and was actually getting better of the boxing exchanges i think dustin eventually would have tko'd conor mcgregor again we never know for sure but that is what the fight seemed like it was going to go to and this all means that dustin poirier is going to fight charles Oliveira. that's the only fight to make next if they run this back yet again man i don't know what to say anymore it has to be dustin versus charles Oliveira for the lightweight title conor can fight whoever he wants the usual way he operates and what I do think is Dustin versus Oliveira is the absolute best fight you can make in this lightweight division right now. They're clearly the two best guys. It's hard to lean one way or the other. Dustin Poirier could beat Oliveira. Oliveira's not the most durable. He's not the toughest guy in the world. And he really doesn't like to move his head. But then again, Dustin Poirier doesn't have the best means of attacking from long ranges, especially on someone like Oliveira, who has the kicks that he has. And Poirier cannot shoot in for takedowns to cover that area. So he's going to have to use his boxing for the most part. Oliveira is the far better kicker. He's very good at checking kicks. He has a snapping jab, long range attacks all over the place. I would have to say Oliveira is the more dangerous fighter there in terms of like the lethality of his techniques. But Dustin Poirier figures things out, man. He's more of a veteran. He's very well rounded with his offense and defense. And that cannot be said for Oliveira. So I do see both of them having great paths to victory against each other. If it hits the ground, I definitely see Oliveira dominating. Unless Dustin gets him to the ground by dropping him, very similar to the way Michael Chandler did it. But can't wait for that fight, man. That has to be the next fight. For me, one of the most anticipated of the year. And as for Connor, man, because of the freak accident, it doesn't write him off. A lot of people were saying with a loss here tonight, he would probably contemplate retirement. It's possible because of what happened to his ankle, but I don't know, man, with how competitive he was and looking at this fight, I just don't see him walking away after something like this. If anything, he's going to have one or two more fights at least, and I don't know who they're going to be against. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up, enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.